have you ever tried to like contemplate what the what the craziest sort of experiment that we could do now or in the future to like really test the simulation theory like is there anything like even like even if it's super speculative hypothetical futuristic like what would be the optimal way to test it well it's an interesting question because the first question is is it possible to test if we're in a simulation and then the second question is should we test if we're in a simulation and uh, there's been different theories on, on on all of these fronts now one one guy is a philosopher named David Chalmers, uh, who's pretty well known. He uh, he also wrote about matrix hypothesis back in two thousand three, the same mm -hmm. year that Bostrom did, and he says that basically, if the simulation was perfect or the virtual reality was perfect, there would be no way to tell. But that's if it was perfect. I mean, any of us who build computer programs know that it's rarely perfect. There's always glitches that come up in in there, and I think a lot yeah. of these glitches that we've talked about, whether it's synchronicity, whether it's near-death experience, whether it's telepathy, are showing us that we are more likely to be in a simulated world than not. Now, but just because you can't prove we're not in a matrix or in a simulation doesn't mean you can't find evidence that we're in a simulation. So mm. different people have proposed, you know, looking at like the geometry uh, of the simulation and they found that there there was a geometry that makes it look almost as if the world is built of some kind of a pixel pixelated hmm. structure like they call them lattices but they they go one way versus the other way so there's that class of looking for pixelated things there's also uh, groups of people that are trying to test out if we're uh, is it do you need a conscious observer for the collapse of the probability wave right and if so, then that's more akin to a video game rendering. Uh, so Tom Campbell uh, and a guy at uh, uh, Caltech, uh, Human Omadi, I think, uh, uh, you have to look up that name, but, uh, uh, and a few other people wrote an article on that, and there's a group trying to perform those experiments uh, at UCAL, uh, uh, sorry, at Cal Poly. Uh, and I, I met those guys, and it, it's interesting. They're, they're moving along very slowly. So that's another angle, is to test you know, do things happen at the moment of observation or mm. do you just need measurements? Uh, another group says, well, we should be able to, another group of, exper uh, of experiments is, uh, can we actually overload the system in some ways? Oh. Can we overload the computation? Right. Now, where I think it's difficult to devise these tests is if we're thinking about it from a classical computing point of view, uh, I don't think we're running on a you know Pentium processor. <laughs> right. uh, I think it's more likely to be something like a quantum computer. Uh, and in a quantum computer, you have bits, but you have qubits. And these qubits take on multiple um, values at the same time. So instead of, like normally a bit is either one or zero. Yes. So we're gonna have one of those values. Right. So a qubit, which is what quantum computing is based off of, they have both of those values, zero or one, until a certain measurement occurs, which is like an observation from our perspective. So what it means is that the bit is in superposition. Okay, now this is really weird too, but there are quantum computers that companies, Google, Amazon, yeah, Microsoft right. have built. And if you have two bits, if you think about it, and and both of them have, you know, are in superposition, that means there's four possible values mm -hmm. that, they can have and then you know if you have three bits it's eight two to the third and then 16 and you know so on from there uh and what quantum computers can theoretically do is explore all of these different possibilities and come up with an answer uh, but that's very strange because some of these problems, they grow so big. If they grow exponentially, they grow really big to mm -hmm. the point where it would yeah. take a classical computer thousands of years, and in some cases, millions of years to go through every possibility. Mm -hmm. Yet, quantum computing can theoretically, and in some cases, it's already been demonstrated, they can solve problems which would take thousands of years. And one of those problems is encryption. 
uh, which, you know, you might have 64-bit encryption or you might have different algorithms. Like Bitcoin runs off of SHA-256, but they run it twice. So mm -hmm. that's like 512 bits, which is two to the 512 uh, possibilities of values you would have to search. Right. The problem is that's more particles than are in the, the physical universe. Mm. So as some people have tried to use this as an argument against simulation to say, well, it would take a computer as big as the universe to oh, keep track wow. of all that information. But they're counting on if you have to compute everything and they're not counting on optimization, getting right back to our original discussion about the reason there's this collapse is so you only have to render the part that's actually being observed mm -hmm. at that point in time. So that's without optimization. Uh, but I think quantum computing itself might show us there's something really weird going on here. Mm -hmm. um, now, by itself, it doesn't prove we're in a simulation, but it does show that uh, some guys like uh, David Deutsch, who's a quantum computing uh, physicist at Oxford, who says he modified Wheeler's phrase, it from bit, and he called it it from qubit. <laughs> oh, wow. Right? Because basically the universe seems to be computing. And that's what particles are. They are like bits of information that... but because they're in superposition and there's all this quantum weirdness, it's almost like the physical universe is a kind of quantum computer in and yeah, of itself. Right. Yeah. Right. Like even the idea of morphic resonance, right? Like a problem being solved on one side of the world and then simultaneously being solved on the other side of the world. It makes sense because if you're a computer program trying to conserve energy and processing power, you would just automatically make that if the problem is solved in one space it's automatically solved in another space right mm, right it's almost like it's caching the solution it's caching the solution and, in yeah. in the whatever it is in the in this dark matter computational cloud if you will yeah the computational cloud yeah, yeah. no i like that uh and it's also possible like you know native americans uh, certain tribes have a saying that like a story stalks the storyteller and similarly, meaning like it's like trying to get to you and similarly with inventors. So maybe there's actually someone outside the simulation that's trying to influence the people inside to mm. see, and trying to send it to multiple people and one of them gets it and now it's cached and now the other people can get access to it. Right. Much more easy because now it's in the database, right? Before they were, mm -hmm. and, and it's only when somebody actually intentionally, you know, figures it out here that it gets into the database that we can access more easily maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, th those are really interesting ideas, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, Rizwan, thank you for doing this, man. This has been a, uh, mind bending conversation. <laughs> yeah, this has been great. I, I really enjoyed it. And, uh, I'm really happy to, to be able to be here in person with you. Yeah. Um, um here, hold your book up so people can see the cover. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, hold it book, up a little bit higher towards this camera. Oh, this camera. There here we go. go. So it's yeah. the simulation hypothesis. Uh, an MIT computer scientist shows why AI, quantum physics, and Eastern mystics agree we're in a video game. Uh, and even if you've seen the old edition, this one is 400 pages and <laughs> completely new in a lot of places. Can people order it now? Or yeah. Can you pre-order it? Or Yeah, they can pre-order it. By the time okay. this comes out, you know, awesome. we may be close to already it being released, but they can pre-order okay. it even while, now while we're recording it. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, man. I really appreciate it. This has been super fun. Thanks for having I'll me. I'll link all the stuff below for everyone. And that's it. Good night, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.